this deck profile has been a long time coming, but I built my first Link Joker deck that I've ever owned. <laughs> so I've never been the Link Joker kind of guy, but I wanted to try it out. So I built the Link Joker deck and I updated it with the stuff from Clan Collection 2. So I wanted to show you guys what my deck profile was for Chaos Breaker updated Star Vaders just in general, and just kind of talk about what a difference has been <laughs> playing this playing a control deck as opposed to like an aggressive fill your board paladin deck. So let's just get right into it. For the starter, we got to fit the vibe and the vibe tells me it's micro hole Draco chit, Draco kid, Draco chid. <laughs> um, micro holes iconic from Link Joker era. And I know it's a Swartz child starter, but I feel like it fits the tone. It's a cyber dragon. Anyways, we're going on to the rest of the grade threes, starting off with our ace boss unit, which is Star Vader Chaos Breaker Dragon. So Chaos Breaker's Dragon's skill is during your turn, if your opponent has a locked card, this gets a thousand van or rear. So it's a good rear, rear guard beat stick too. Vanguard Circle, act. You counter blast one once per turn. Your opponent gets an imaginary gift force and you get to choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. So your opponent's probably just gonna pick their Vanguard because whatever gift they put it on, you're just probably gonna lock the unit in the front row that they put the gift marker on. Um, second skill is when your opponent's locked card is unlocked, you Soul Blast one, you retire one of your opponent's unlocked units, you draw a card, and your opponent removes a total of markers from their Protect in their hand or the Imaginary Excel or Force on their board, and you remove them. So if you, oh, you remove two of them, uh, and for every marker you remove, you get a force marker. So basically for every retire, you get two markers, which is pretty dope. So slow deck for the most part, which I'm not used to, um, but it's really nice to be able to play a deck for once where I'm in the controlling end of it and not trying to play around it, but it does get a little bit eh, kind of slow for me but I do think it's cool that you can remove your opponent's markers so that if you're playing against an opponent's deck when they get a bunch of protect markers you can at least know that you can get rid of those. Chaos Breaker Dragon is actually a pretty cool card. I like it a lot. So the next card is updated from Clan Collection. If you already know what I'm getting to it's Star Vader Infinite Zero Dragon. This used to be the break ride card back in the limit break days. So it's kind of cool that we now have the whole combo of Infinite Zero onto Chaos Breaker again. So Infinite Zero skill is when it's placed on the van or it's rode upon, like a break ride, you kind of bless one and you discard a card. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and you lock it. And if your damage zone has four or more cards, you choose one card in the front and the back instead. So it's cool that you can still lock a card and it's not just kind of like forced onto the back row. I like that it's able to do it on front um, front or front and back, so that's cool. Discarding does kind of suck, but I guess they had to make the card fair because locking is pretty strong. Um, and then the second skill is Continuous Van and Rear. During your turn, this unit gets 5k for each of your opponent's locked cards. So if you do it while you're at 4 damage, uh, if this is on, if you ride this on top of another one, you get to do the skill twice, so you get to lock four things. So this makes this a really big number, but also locking your opponent out of four circles is pretty hefty. It's a little excessive, I would say, too, so maybe don't do it too much. I would say maybe mitigate your locks a little bit. Um, keep a kind of control tempo going there. But the 5k is pretty helpful, so at least it's not like a, a grade three that kind of does nothing in general. Um, it's no chaos close, but it's a pretty good you know, retired or discarded or retired target as well. So now lastly for our grade threes, I'm running two copies of Nordstrom Dragon. Um, so what Nordstrom Dragon does is uh, when you place it on the rearguard circle, if your Vanguard's a grade three Cyber Dragon, which all the grade threes are, you bind one of your opponent's rearguards and then you can choose to retire this unit and then counter charge. It's mostly there for the counter charge. It is nice that you can bind one of your opponent's rear guards. Um, but it's just funny that this card was originally for Swartzchild because the main Link Joker support back then was both Messiah and Deleters. 
and Schwarzschild was kind of not really doing too well, so it was just kind of like a whatever deck. But now, since Chaos Breaker and Infinite Zero are both Cyber Dragons, this card has a lot of potential. You definitely want the counter charge in this deck. Um, I probably would be running more copies, just depending on what I decide to do in the future. For now, I'm just running the two. Definitely think this card could be a four of, for sure, because of how important counter blasting is in this deck, but I'm running it at two. So now we're on to the grade twos. We got four copies of Colony Maker, which is a new card from V Clan Collection Volume 2. So Colony Maker, kind of like its predecessor, helps you fill your board when your opponent has locked cards. Um, so when it's placed on the van or rearguard circles, you soul blast one, you discard a card. Still kind of sucks you got a discard, but whatever. You look at the top five cards of your deck, you search for a Starvader, and you call it as Rest. But if your opponent has a locked card, you call it a stand. So it's a great ride target to help you fill your board. Even though if the uh, Starvaders are rest, it's still nice to have just for the following turn, just to have a board. Um, but still being able to look at the top five and call any Starvader just to fill your board in a control deck is really, really helpful. So Colony Maker is definitely a four of in this deck. Next up, the other Starvader Grade 2. This is the one that came out in the same set as Chaos Breaker. We have Bisection Starvader Zacronium. So Zacronium skill is Van or Rear when it's placed. If you have a Vanguard with Starvader in its name, you kind of blast one, and your opponent looks at the top card of their deck, and they put it on the rear guard under an open rear guard circle as lock. If they put it in the back row, you get to draw a card, and this gets 10k. So... If they put it in the front row, that means your opponent lost out on an attacker. So it's kind of like they have to decide what they want to do there. Uh, in the second skill is if your Vanguard's grade 3 or greater, and your opponent has a locked card, your Vanguard's original critical becomes 2. So on top of the force markers you're going to be getting from Chaos Breaker skill, now your Vanguard has a crit for some pressure. So Synchronium is a, is a definite 4 of in this deck. You want to have that extra crit applied to your Vanguard. So that's it for grade twos. Um, I'm only running the eight grade twos just because I want to make more room for Starvaders. And also, um, there really aren't a lot of other grade twos that help with like the whole locking thing. So the eight grade twos works fine. Next up, we got some more Starvaders. We got Prison Gate Starvader, Palladium. Palladium's coming back. So Palladium skill is uh, when this unit is rode upon, you can move it to a rear guard circle. So it's kind of like Forerunner. Second skill is when your opponent's lock card is unlocked, you kind of boss one, and you retire this unit. Your opponent looks at the top card of the deck and they call it to an open rear as locked, so replenish as locks. Your opponent has to keep a board locked in general, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like what the old Palladium did, except instead of it being a new card, it kept the card there. Instead of retiring itself, it used to go to soul. But I guess, you know, having too much soul in this deck would have been OP or something. But it's still nice. It's a Star Vader. It's a grade one. has a great... Uh, Vanguard skill, so might as well run four of it since we got to search Starvaders. Next up for more Starvader support, we got Starvader Cra Carving Claw, Craving Claw. Yes, Craving Claw. So Craving Claw's first skill is when this when this unit's attack or the attack that it boosts hits a Vanguard, you look at the top five, look for a Starvader, add it to your hand, and you shuffle your deck. So great ride. Great booster, um, helps you find more Starvaders just to kind of keep the tempo. Second skill is also really good. Act, rear guard circle. If your opponent's vanguard is great through your greater, you can put this into your soul. And you choose one of your opponent's lock cards, you unlock it, and then if you unlock the card, you choose one of your opponent's uh, other rear guards and you lock it. So this is cool because if, you're, if you do the whole um, Zacronian thing, and they decide to lock a card in their back row. You draw, you get the power, you use this skill, and then you lock something in the front row anyways. So I like that it allows you to switch locks. So if your opponent locks something that you're like, mm, I didn't want you to lock that. I wanted you to lock that instead. You can make that decision for yourself. And it fills up soul. So that's good for Chaos Breaker too. So definite for, a, for, the, for the Chaos Breaker deck. All right, next up for grade ones, it's not a Starvader, but I still think it's a really good card for any V Premium deck. Uh, for this one, it's Lady Battle of the White Dwarf. 
So White Dwarf skill is if your opponent has a face down card on their circles or in their bind zone, this gets 5k. So walk, easy, face down card, 5k. Second skill is when it's placed from hand, van or rear. Look at top five, add a grade three. If you added one, discard a card, shuffle your deck. So you want to find either Chaos Breaker or Infinite Zero to ride in general. This helps you find your ride targets. You can obviously discard cards like Infinite Zero if you search it, but you don't really care for it, just discard it. Helps thin out the deck. And it's a 13k booster. It's, it's nice to have. Um, also, it's a good ride target if you have to ride it, just for grade one consistency. And lastly, for our normal units, grade ones, we have Crunching Deleter Bar Barwell. Barwell. Baruwell. So a bar rail skill is when it's placed, you soul blast one, and your opponent cannot turn uh, his or her cards face up during their next end phase. So things such as unlock, uh, they cannot face up and they cannot counter charge. So that's just for the whole next turn. So that means that when you place when you place it, you soul blast one, and those cards that you locked and your opponent's face down damage is just stuck that way until like the end of their next turn. So when I was saying earlier about the whole thing where if you ride infinite zero on top of infinite zero, and then you decide to call this and keep those four cards just locked completely, that that's a pretty, it's a pretty fun, funny turn to do to your opponent. It's, it's really aggravating for the most part. I'm only running it at two. It costs a soul blast and you want to save your soul for chaos breaker just so you can draw cards, get your force markers, keep the deck going but if you want to be that guy that's just completely blocks out your opponent's board you might as well abuse this card so we'll run it at two and lastly for grade ones we got solidar bangle so this is an order card it's a grade one what it does is during your main phase you put a grade two or less card from your hand into your soul you look at the top three cards of your deck you add one and you put the rest on the bottom of your deck and you do not shuffle this is mostly just to fill your soul since you put a grade two or less into your soul. So that helps you if you don't have soul for Chaos Breaker's cost. You just do this real quick, then have it ready for the next turn. Um, the other thing is just, you know, looking at top three, scrying three, adding something. It's not a bad card. Uh, I will say if you really want to run more copies of Nordstrom, you can drop the white dwarfs, like a white dwarf or two and the order if you want to, just so you can have more counter charging accessible. Um, but other than that, it's really up to your personal preference. So that's it for those. Now we're going to go on to triggers. Um, for the grade three lineup, I forgot to go into Oblivion Quasar because I'm doing two and two. So I have two Oblivion Quasars and two of the, um, virtual particles. Um, I won't lie. I didn't want to pick up two more Quasars because Heal Guardians are kind of a little too much at the moment for me. It might not be too much for other people, but for a deck that's not my main focus and that I don't play as often that, you know, I do with my other V Premium decks, this works out fine for me. It's two for the early game, for the late game. It's like, I like to have the regular Heal Guardians as the 20k shield. It's a good balance between the two. I feel like I would run the four max of the Quasars since I am running the White Dwarfs. That way, make it easier to search out Heal Guardians if I want to. But this is what I'm what I'm running with for right now. So let's go on to the rest of the triggers. I've got four copies of Cosmo Reef because you want to draw cards so that you can discard cards and it's PG. And speaking of more draws, two more vanilla draws, which is Gerg, Silverway Gerg. Get his name in there. So six draws because you want to use the draw triggers as discard fodder for um, infinite zero and for a colony maker. And, you know, having more hand helps with that as well. Staying alive also helps and draw dam damaging draw triggers feels really good. So lastly, we're running six crit. So I got four of the Axino Dragon, which is like, you know, the Star Vader aesthetic. And then uh, Quaking Foot, you know, it's just a, another crit <laughs> for Link Joker. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it for the main deck. Um, this deck is a lot of fun if you like to be in control of your opponent and you definitely want to, you know, play it slow. Like you don't want to be too aggressive with how you're locking cards. I think Infinite Zero is a very interesting addition to the deck. It does feel like it can be kind of clunky on some turns when you have to discard for the additional lock, but being able to lock two things during your opponent's turn by going ride Infinite Zero, then ride Chaos Breaker, kind of blast two, discard one, lock two of your opponent's front row, and then that way you can, you know, kind of make it so your opponent doesn't have too much to work with. If they're playing Excel, you're just going to remove their Excel markers the following turn. So Chaos Breaker has a lot of potential for V Premium, and I do like how it plays out. So that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Thanks again for watching. If you have any other questions or recommendations, I would love to hear them. I am definitely new to the uh, control deck uh, group. So let me know what you guys are running for your Chaos Breakers deck. I would love to get some feedback and just bring up any other comments, questions, or concerns in the comment section below. And yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.